Hello and welcome back to the International News Stage at CES 2015. I'm Will Finlater from Stuff and I'm joined by Palmer Lucky from Oculus VR. Very excited to have you here. Thanks so much for making the time for seeing us. Yeah, um, that's great. So how's the, uh, how's the show been for you so far, Palmer? So far it's been good. Um, just really busy. Just this show has massive scale. Walking everywhere is hard. <laughs> Taxi cabbing is every, everywhere is also hard. Have you seen some uh, exciting stuff? Excited by any of the, the launches at the show? I don't think this is the best CES I've been to, to be honest. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be totally straight with you. There's, there's some interesting things, but, but I'm actually a little disappointed. You're disappointed, but... Um, what 2011, that was a good year. <laughs> a vintage year. Um, so, uh, so you had some announcements to make yesterday, um, some new, quite exciting audio developments. If you could go into a little bit of detail about those, that would be great. Sure, we've been working on an audio SDK for uh, virtual reality that integrates with our headset. Uh, the prototypes that we're showing have built-in audio hardware and also built-in audio software that tracks your head position in real time as it moves and adjusts the audio to match. So uh, if you, surround sound is uh, an old technology that's been around for quite some time, but it really only works optimally when you're looking directly forward at the screen in a certain position. What we can do is allow you to have spatial audio facing in any direction and any, in any location, where, no matter where you are. So how does that work? Is that, does that require um, some major changes to, to the games, uh, for example, you're playing? You, you can think of it as like ray tracing, but for audio rather than graphics. Um, it does require some changes, but we have an SDK that can be plugged into most game engines pretty easily. Right, so, so this is something that you're expecting a lot of games to, uh, to, oh. to be optimized for? Probably the majority of virtual reality games will use this SDK. Fantastic. So um, that, uh, that's uh, one of the developments. What, uh, what else have, uh, can we expect to see from Oculus at the show this year? Uh, so three months ago, we showed off our new prototypes that we codenamed Crescent Bay. Uh, we showed this off at our developer conference, Oculus Connect. And this is the first time we've shown it to the public. So we have a big booth where we've got a lot of those prototypes. It's the latest stuff out of the lab. And we're showing people how, how nice it is. So what, uh, what, what, uh, how does uh, Crescent Bay move things on for Oculus? So Crescent Bay is higher resolution, higher frame rate, lighter, more comfortable than any of our previous hardware. Also, like I said earlier, it has integrated audio hardware. Um, it also has full, full 360 degree tracking with the position tracking camera, whereas before we could only track in a more limited volume. Now we can track full 360 degree turns and we can also track people through a much larger tracking volume than just a little tiny cone. So um, we have people walking around an entire room with one camera. So really, I need to check it out. Um, all of these developments, they're all um, they're all aimed, targeted at making it a more immersive experience. Is that right? Um, is there anything else that, that that you're working on that's uh, that's sort of you know going to going to improve that too? We're working on a lot of different things. Virtual reality isn't just about visuals. Like you, know, you need audio, but you also want to have input devices that are more suited to virtual reality than a keyboard or a mouse or a gamepad. Um, but we don't have anything to really announce at this time. No, I wouldn't expect so. Um, so uh, it's been a couple of years now since we first saw Rift, um, since the Kickstarter campaign, you know, the huge news around that. Um, and the product seems to have developed uh, vastly over that, over that time. It feels a lot more sort of, a lot more realized than some products that are already made it to market. Where are you going to be happy to say, OK, we're good to go. Let's press the button. Let's make this uh, a, a big release. We already reached that point. We already know what we need to ship. We're not just spinning our wheels in research and development until we feel good. We know what we're building. It's just a long process to actually build it and get it out to consumers as a product. Yeah. So is it something that we can expect to see fairly soon? I can't say, but <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Um, VR is about much more than just gaming. Obviously, there's lots of potential. Um, uh, Oculus was uh, acquired by Facebook last year. Um, I'd, I was wondering if you could go into some depth about what you think the, a, a Facebook, a social experience on, in VR might be like. I mean, that wasn't the, the point isn't to put Facebook in VR. Facebook is, is, is an application. It's a good social network for mobile or PC but it wasn't designed for virtual reality. It's, it's, it's kind of silly to assume that it would be an obvious fit for virtual reality. Virtual reality is its own, its very own different medium. 
And I think there's going to be social experiences that are powerful in it, but it's not going to be Facebook. No. So what, what do you think it might look like? If it was like? going to be, they wouldn't have bought us. <laughs> what do you think it, it, it might look like? Have you got any idea of you know, this? I mean, it's not my idea. You can look at virtual reality science fiction as it's existed for decades. Uh, the vision of sci-fi and most the vision of virtual reality in most science fiction is not that people will sit and play video games in their basement. It's that there will be a digital world that exists parallel to our own with people moving freely back and forth between the two and doing things that are impossible in the real world. That's clearly a social experience. When you give people the tools to do something uh, very quickly, it turns into a tool to, uh, to communicate and play with other people. So communication is, is a, a major part of, um, of what you're, you're going to achieve with, uh, with Rift in the future. Um, are there any other applications that you're particularly excited about? Any, uh, any pieces of content that you think are, you know, that everyone should see in VR? I'm most excited about gaming and especially multiplayer gaming where you can have multiple people in the same virtual space. But I think that medicine and education are going to be big, big. I think also like... Uh, kind of mundane stuff that people don't spend a lot of time thinking about or building stuff for, like emergency first responder training, like firefighters and police training them how to respond to certain situations without putting them in danger or putting them in situations that you may be hard to train for in real life. And uh, have, you seen, uh, have, you, have you seen any specific examples of, you know, of, of, of those pieces of content being created? Yet? All of those things are being built. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Gaming-wise, um, what game does everyone need to experience in VR, to your mind? I, I try to not play favorites, but <laughs> um, I, especially because we haven't launched a consumer product now. Anything that's out there, uh, it, it, it would kind of give an unfair advantage to talk about the best games that are out there right now because there are people who have software that they just haven't rolled out yet. They're keeping it under wraps until they can sell it to consumers, and I don't want to penalize people who are making that decision because in many, many, many cases, it's a smart one. Sure. Um, so, how do you feel about the, the? I think it's fair to say that you've blazed a trail and created uh, a, a new VR market, and there's a lot of competitor devices out there. Um, certainly, Google's getting in on the action with uh, with cardboard. Um, how, how do you feel about this uh, this sort of emerging um, VR ecosystem of various different products? I think it's pretty interesting to see virtual reality go from something that nobody believes in to something that has mm -hmm. this ecosystem from a lot of different companies popping up. Well, it'll be interesting. I mean, like you said, I, I don't think Cardboard is Google jumping into the race. It's, I mean, Cardboard is, the idea's been around for a long time. I mean, even like, I, I've worked on foam core, little folding foam viewers before at my previous job. It's, it's, a, it's a very old idea. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, what's more interesting to me are the companies like Sony or Samsung that are making serious investments in virtual reality and actually trying to push the technology forward, not just putting together a side project. And that's, that's pretty cool that there's now hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars being burnt on VR research and development. And so um, Oculus VR worked directly with Samsung on the Gear VR headset, and that seems to have um, uh, captured a lot of people's imaginations. I mean, uh, how did that come about, that, that sort of relationship with Samsung? Um, Samsung was actually, they approached us, they were, they were interested in virtual reality and had been working on their own kind of mobile VR project and it was really terrible, so they came to us for help. <laughs> um, and uh, are you pleased with the response that it's, it's received? It's, it seems to be selling Oh, it's well. really good. It's been great. I mean, they've got super smart hardware people. It's just they didn't have VR expertise in-house. That's why we made all the software that powers it. So, and we've helped them do a lot of hardware optimization as well. But. It's, it's gone over really well, better than I think either of us expected. Do you think, um, obviously Rift, Rift is a, a tethered uh, device, it's, uh, there's, it, there's wires involved, and Gear VR is something that's, uh, that's just um, completely an integrated solution. Um, what do you think is uh, you know, the, 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 the version of VR that's going to that's gonna work for most people? I mean, they both work for people. Sure. Like, people could use both of them. Um, but I think in the very long term, the, the end game is going to be headsets that have all of the processing power integrated on board. Uh, that's almost certainly where things are going in the long run. So, um, so, so the Gear VR approach is... Well, I mean, uh, Gear VR is also, it's a phone drop-in. A dr phone plugs into it. It's not a dedicated device. I'm saying the long run, it's probably going to be dedicated virtual reality and augmented reality headsets because they're 
very similar technology in a lot of ways mm -hmm. um, that'll be powered by, by chips that are on the headset itself. Okay, interesting. Um, uh, with, uh, with, with Gear VR, are you, are you familiar with, uh, with any of the, the pieces of content that have been created for that? I know there's a collaboration with, with Audi that you may have seen. I am yeah. familiar with it. Yeah, what do you think of that, that sort of application? That sort of application is interesting because there's a lot of brands that are realizing that they can use virtual reality to give people a better look into their products and their philosophy than they are able to get across on print or in video or in any other kind of medium. Um, and in many cases, like especially with a car, you can actually give them a really good approximation of an experience that they would normally have to go to a dealer to get. Uh, and that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, very much so. Um, so uh, you acquired Nimble VR uh, earlier on last year. Uh, what was it about Nimble VR that you thought, okay, we must, we've, we've got to get involved with these guys? I can't talk about the specifics. Okay, but a fascinating product all the same. Um, so, um, so uh, over the course of the next sort of few months, we're going to see uh, further announcements from uh, from Oculus. We're going to um, hopefully see some uh, some uh, an announcement of a final product. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, do you think that um, do you think that in um, in, in 2015 we're going to basically see an explosion in VR? This is going to be the year of VR. Yes. Yeah, you do. Any other specific products out there that you think uh, you know are pushing things forward in, in that way? I think Sony's Sony is also doing a good job. Yeah. Like we don't have any kind of partnership with them, but they're uh, they understand the problems in VR. They understand how to fix them, and they care about fixing them. There's a lot of companies that either don't understand how to make good VR, or they do understand and they just don't care about doing it. Uh, I think as Sony and Oculus both have similar philosophies where we realize that our products have flaws and we're, we're, we, have to, we know we have to fix them before shipping something to people because we don't want to piss people off with bad products. Right. And what are those? Can you go into any more detail about what those specific flaws are, the things that... Sure. Uh, yeah. Things like latency, like low resolution, like having a low persistence display, making something that is tuned from end to end to be extremely comfortable for the user and to not have any kind of glitches that are going to make people feel feel bad or feel like it's a cheap product. Uh, and it, t it takes a lot of money and research and development to, to get to that point, especially when you, everyone's on different hardware paths. You can't necessarily just reuse the same work that someone else did if your product works in a different way. Um, I think there's re really only a small handful of companies that are trying to approach things that way rather than just saying, well, this is what we can pull off right now. Let's push it out. So how about the, um, the uh, I guess, a, the a generic issue that, that might afflict all VR um, HMD-type products is that, you know, they're very personal. They are very, you're, 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 you're um, potentially taking away some of the social aspects of gaming. Is that something that concerns you at all, or do you think that that's... That's okay. No, I think it's an absurd concern. <laughs> um, just because you're in a headset doesn't mean you're disconnected from people. I mean, you could j t talk about a phone and say, look, when you're looking at a phone, you're not talking to people, you're less social. You, but people use them for messaging, they use them for calling people on the phone, they use them for video chatting. It's just a different kind of communication. People aren't gonna put on VR headsets and like I said earlier, sit in a basement alone and not talk to anybody. They're almost certainly gonna be using them to communicate with other people. And in many ways, it's gonna be a far more social experience and more genuine human communication experience than, than chatting on a computer or sending an email. If, if anything, it'll bring an element of humanity back to digital communication, not the other way around. Yeah, fascinating. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to speak to us on the international news stage. I'm Will Finlater. Come back soon for more interviews on the international news stage. Thanks, Palm Lucky. Thank you. Cheers.